marijuana patients. I'm here to discuss with you the reason I don't understand why you guys are doing this. You're trying to limit what we can get. I mean, we we made a, we voted. It's an amendment. Why why do we have to beg you guys for what we're entitled to? What we voted for. Um, I suffer from fibromyalgia, chronic back pain, IBS, and my list goes on and on. There are different forms that I ingest and use medical marijuana to help me with my pains, my IBS, etc., all my symptoms. Um, I also wanted to bring up the point that the uh, mentally ill are not being considered under um, the Amendment 2. Okay? We are left out. Now, if it wasn't because I have fibromyalgia, I would be left out in the cold uh, as um, the rest of the, me <clears throat> the uh, people with me mental illnesses. Okay? Thank you. Amy Peters, Joanne McNeely. Ari Gersten. This proposal is, is an absolutely absurd proposal. I believe that this totally frustrates the intent of the voters by superimposing the current legislative scheme on top of the, the amendment on top of the current legislative scheme, and that is not appropriate. That's not what the voters asked for. It's not what should be done. The rollout of the current program has been an absolute disaster. The, the amendment two should not be limited to seven families. There should not be complete vertical integration like there has been, there should be the ability to have competing dispensaries, cultivators, processors. The variety just is not even contemplated at all in this rule. And again, it's trying to superimpose on top of a current system that hasn't worked. And another thing that's being added is to uh, incorporate the Florida Board of Medicine, which is something that the voters didn't ask for, the voters didn't decide, and it's a, it's a body that just has no say. And it should not be interfering with the doctor-patient relationship. And I think that these are all serious concerns that need to be addressed. And this is, shouldn't just be a formality where comments are made and people stand up and talk and nothing gets done. And then two years later, people are still waiting for their medicine. Yep, exactly. Hi, I'm Joanne McNeely. Um, I'm an advocate for legalization, and I'm also a patient. Um, I've been an advocate now for six years. I've collected petition signatures, and I'm happy to see Amendment 2 pass, but I'm not happy with the implementation that is on board at this point in time. Um, I suffer from severe chronic calf conditions from failed back surgery. I'm a breast cancer survivor. I have PTSD. Um, to have us to be registering every 45 days to reinstate our license, is ridiculous. My condition I've had since 90s, 95, 96, that I've been severely disabled as a result of my back. And I should not have to, first of all, it's cost prohibitive for me as a patient. I also voted, and I believe everyone in this room voted, to have full flower therapy. We right. voted that we able to apply the third in a natural state. Now, the state would be remiss if they did not allow that in our state because everyone here that voted for it voted based on what the models are now in other Western states. So if you decide to not allow us to have full flower therapy to be able to purchase what we need at the dispensary, we will then be subject to going back to the black market. And I do not want to do that. What's their reason for it? Yeah! What's the reason? I, I was also contacted by a representative of True Leaf, and it was amazing to me that I knew more about cannabis than she did. <laughs> really? Kim Rivers. It's ridiculous. Okay? We have cannabis activists in this state with children with epilepsy, and they want to know, how is it processed? How was that oil made? What strain was put in it? I know better what I need. Mean. Now, the reason why the models in California and Colorado exist and have succeeded is because that state listened to the experts. The experts are the people who have cultivated it. The people who have been involved in it for years, where their passion lies. 
Okay? We can't have growers come in and have 30 years of experience growing tomatoes <laughs> to we need understand to grow our own. what this plant is about. I understand more. So this is what I want our state to do, because I do not want to continue with the black market like it is right now. Thank you. Everett Peterson, Eleanor Sobel, Bill Clark, and Kenneth Watts. If you could all make your way for me. Thank you very much. Sobel, and I am a term limited state senator. I've been in the Florida Senate for eight years, the Florida House. I was a member of the uh, Broward County School Board. And I've had a lot of government experience. First of all, I want to thank Mr. Bax and his staff for being here today from the Florida Department of Health. And I also want to thank the Broward Department of Health for having this hearing. And I hope, I hope that this is something that they will, this, these meetings will allow us, the people, to say what's important and they will really listen and take it to heart. That are we timing her? Are saying. Two minutes. No, please do the right thing. Please do the right thing. Don't restrict physicians, veterans, farmers, minorities, and dispensaries with too many regulations. I've heard that in Tallahassee a lot. We have too many regulations. Well, let's restrict the number of regulations that we have on implementing the Constitutional Amendment. I consider myself a capitalist. How many capitalists are in the room? We believe in competition. We yes. don't want the licenses restricted. Let's create Florida jobs. How many times have we heard jobs, jobs, jobs? Right. Yeah. Well, this is the opportunity for Floridians exactly right. to truly create those jobs that we need. And we can do it. We can do it. We have the human capital that can bring people together and make a difference in this industry. It's a good turn. Most people should have access to quality, productive, affordable, and access without delay. I'm not sure that anybody here would like to know you have to wait 90 days till you get help with a medical condition that is truly life-threatening and you are living in constant pain. Ten seconds, Senator I have a daughter with Crohn's disease. I know many teenagers with Crohn's disease and they get medical, they get marijuana on the black market. We don't know the quality of it. They cannot attend school because they are in such pain. Let's clear that up and end the black market today. Fear. F-E-A-R, we all know what that means, false evidence appearing real. This is not the same as pill mills. No way. No way. We would think that this is the same as pill mills where no one has died of an overdose of marijuana. This is Time. So this is our chance. Yeah. This is our chance to make this new constitutional amendment correct and implement it in the correct way. And we have a lot of professionals here. The Arizona does very well too. Thank you.